Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another recap of College Hill Celebrity Edition Episode 7. It's hard to say goodbye. So if y'all been keeping up with the series, y'all already know. Jocelyn and Amber, they got into it last episode. So both Amber and Jocelyn now have to go up against the ASU Disciplinary Board with... um. Dr. Petty and I think Dr. Bell. And Amber goes to see Dr. Petty first. And basically Dr. Petty like tell like asks her like what, what really happened. So Amber broke it down to like how the professor was basically asking what my racial mountain was. And she said, this is my racial mountain. Basically, it was played out physical altercation. That was her racial mountain. So, Jocelyn took it upon herself to say some derogatory um, terms towards Amber. The first time, you know, Amber, she was like, took away a grain of salt and she walked out the classroom to compose herself or whatever. And then the second time, you know, Jocelyn kept going back and forth at it. And at that same time, it was a whole bunch of commotion going on. The professor was screaming Jocelyn's name. So basically, kind of to get her to, like, calm down and, like, you let like let it, like, die down. But, you know, she basically was toning her out and kept going back and forth. Next thing you know, Amber gets up. She blacks out. And, you know, that's how the fight ensued. So basically, Amber apologized for her behavior and after all that other stuff. Dr. Petty was like, listen, I understand that. And, but like I said, in the beginning, the first day of class, I told y'all, I have a zero tolerance for fighting, alcohol, and how you uh, appear. Like this school is about black excellence and fighting right there, that's not black, black excellence. So therefore, you know, y'all cannot continue with this program. And that's just what it is. Amber feels as if Dr. Petty wouldn't understand, but she actually understands. Y'all not listening to the part where she said zero tolerance. She don't care who you is. Fighting is fighting. Violence is violence. Like, that's my policy. One policy that I said I do not want to see or tolerate. And the fact that you disregard what I said, I understand you was in the moment and, you know, the words are being spooled, spooled at you. But still, you should be at that white end of decorum. You should say, okay, well, dang, if I do this, but you know, at that time, in the heat of the moment, you're not thinking about the consequence. You're just thinking about how I'm going to get this person. And it's crazy. They're there based off of the racial and black inequalities that people go through on a daily basis. And the fact that you as a black person, you basically was like, oh, dang, let me just slap him, slap him in the face with this whole situation. So... Yeah, at that same point, I feel for on both sides. Like, I feel on both sides. So, basically, Dr. Pay was like, you cannot continue. And that was that. So, after Amber leaves, she decides to um, leave the building. She decides to call Ray. And Ray picks up. She tells him, like, listen, I can't, I can't, you know, stay here no more because of what happened. And they feel like it's unfair. I know it's unfair, but, like, they stated we have a zero tolerance. So if you cannot like abide by the rules regardless of how big or small it is, we got to let you go. That's just fair. Point blank period. Like I got to stand on my 10 toes and hold you accountable for your actions because that's the reason why you got expelled. Like, but anyways, moving right along. And the, Amber was going to go to the house to say goodbye to the family and stuff like that because they're now family friends like come on now so yeah now um amber she gets to the house and she's greeted by orion he opens the no not Ryan. well parker and they hug it's like it's like parker really understands because she's a biracial person herself so she gets like yeah all this I I get it. So Amber says her goodbyes and everything. She packs up her stuff. She ends up getting 
giving Tiffany a Versace robe because she got a whole bunch of them. And she just feels super bad that, you know, that, you know, it's sad that the fight happened. But at the same time, it's unfair that she couldn't continue her studies, like, continue her studies off campus and, you know, still be able to graduate. But, yeah, I get it. Rules are there in place for a reason. So if you're not going to buy by the rules, you got to dip. So after that, they said good day goodbyes or whatever. Everybody was sad that she's gone. It was now time for Jocelyn to go meet with Dr. Petty. And Jocelyn, she is kind of fake for that point. She put on them fake tears to walk into the um classroom so they could feel like some sympathy towards her. But mind you, she was antagonizing the whole situation. Everybody was there to see and come to find out the fact that doc the professor was calling her name during the whole process, like Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. And she heard them and basically and disregarded what she said and just kept going back and forth with Amber. So long story short, Dr. Petty was like, listen, rules are in place for a reason. You cannot be here, be here as well. And she still did the waterworks a little bit. Then she was like, yeah, okay, I left. So after that, Jocelyn, she walked away and guess went to the hotel. So back at the house, because it's early morning. And Amber arrives at the house and said goodbyes or whatever. So the the rest of the gang, they couldn't like really stay with her that much because they also had to go to a field trip. So they get to the Harris house with um Dr. Howard, their civil rights uh, professor. And also the lady that was involved with the, they took a talk about the Freedom Writers. Basically, there was a group of people, including Dr. Martin Luther King, that basically went to this house and strategized ideas and how to do the boycotts and, and the segregation meetings and stuff like that. Both blacks and whites came together for that. And the the lady of the house, uh, Ms. Velda Harris, well, now I'll go by Dr. Montgomery, she basically brought them in, told them the stories of what they used to do in the back in the day. Because Maya, at that time, she was just a little girl, so her mom and dad you know, did these meetings and stuff like that. So the fact that she was able to, like, get this experience um, firsthand and be able to tell the group that it was amazing to see and watch. And as that they was um, talking and stuff like that, um, Ray J made a suggestion, like, dang, I wish Amber and Jocelyn would have came to this house before they had the fight. It probably wouldn't have went down the way that it did. But, you know, things happen for a reason. So it's an eye-opener lesson that everybody was able to, like, take something from the Harris house and, and think. Martin Luther King's house was just two doors down. The crazy thing is that he was always in and out of this house. So Quay asked the question. He was like, so, so not being too personal, what was, like, one of your fondest or favorite memories of Dr. Martin Luther King? And she talked about how he's the help with the, the protests and stuff like that. So it was just good, rich history. I felt like I was with them getting this lesson. Like, it was just so good to hear. And the fact that, you know, we we went through so much that we went through back in the day. And still to this day, like, the history is basically repeating itself. But the history behind it and how things came together it all makes sense. I really understand it. So, yeah, that was that. After that, they went home. And um, after this, they went home or whatnot. Um, a person that wrote a book, her name was Yara or Yadi Blau. She came and basically the producer felt that she should come and give their insight about what really happened between Amber and Jocelyn. So she comes. She wrote a book called... Um, I forgot. Basically, the one drop, and it basically talks about race, colorism, and stuff like that. So she basically comes in, asks them some questions, and Parker said, "I feel this way because I identify as both black and white." But you know, sometimes these conversations are a little bit uncomfortable. So yeah, it's not about basically your your race; it's about your skin tone because you know, to this day, people feel as if light skins are superior. And the darker the skin, the more in value you are to a person or the needs or stuff like that. It's just how it is from work to school, regular. Every, everything is just back and forth. The cycle is basically repeating itself. Like, yeah, it's to no avail. It's, 
it's nothing going to change. But it's change starts from within. So in order to be the change you want to see, you got to start with you. So after that, they got a better insight of what was happening. So it's now, what, the next day. Um, oh, later on that night, my bad. Tiffany and Orion, with the help of Quay, she ran him a bath. And she basically, I guess, got some. Because that was like, oh, woo. Quay was trying to focus on his work. But he was like, dang, do I be the good friend or the bad friend? Well, it seems that he was both. So, Tiffany and Orion had their moment and whatnot. So, that was spicy. So, it's now the next day. Ray decides to hold a meeting and say that Jocelyn got expelled too. And that he's going to go meet up with her and see if she could come by to the house to say goodbye. So, they go meet up somewhere, I think on the pier or whatever. And they're talking and whatnot. And Jocelyn, basically, she understands where Dr. Petty was coming from. But at the same time, she wished Dr. Petty was a little bit more lenient on her. But whatever the case would be. So, Ray J decides to talk Jocelyn to come to do a proper goodbye. So, she ended up pulling, to the, pulling up to the house. And, yeah. She felt as if nobody would want to see him. But everybody got, when she got there, it was cool. Orion greeted her at the door and gave him, gave her. They gave each other hugs and whatnot, and they went to go talk about talk to the rest of them. Come to find out, Quay and Parker wasn't there because they did not want to see her. They went to go see a movie, so I guess Jocelyn felt some type of way. But you know, she turned up with um the rest of the people that was there, and she asked how was the house. So she was gone. Everybody was like, it was quiet. It really has. It's like a it's like a melancholy, somber feel, but, you know, she came back with the energy. Everybody was sad that she's gone, especially Tiffany. She was just sad that both of them couldn't get the chance to finish out the experience because they was literally here. This is the finish line. You see how close that was? Like, literally right there. That was the finish line. But, you know, things happen for a reason and stuff like that. So, that was a definite learning experience for everybody involved. So, that was good. And yeah, that was it for this episode. Next week's episode, they got their finals. And it's graduation day. Like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. It just sucks that, you know, Amber and Jocelyn couldn't finish it out with the rest of them. And Jocelyn also told to Ray she wanted to see him get his diploma. I do too because he's come a long way. And the growth definitely shows. Like, it definitely shows. Good job, Ray. I'm so proud of you. Like, yeah. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Next week is the last episode. Yes. So, with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.